All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the last part of this Fibonacci episode. And in fact, I did save the best for last because it turns out there's a super fast way of solving the Fibonacci sequence much faster than the other ones. But let me recall, un plus two equals to un plus one plus un. So the future is given by the sum of the next two terms, if you want. Or in other words, if you also think in another way, the present is given by the sum of the two past terms. And let's do u0 equals to 0 and u1 equals to 1. And today, I will present you a more differential equations or difference equations approach to this which also helps us solve more general uh, linear recurrence relations. Okay. So first of all, let's just rewrite this. You can rewrite this as the following. un plus 2 minus un plus 1 minus un equals to 0. And here's a clever idea. Suppose that we have a solution of the following form. So suppose un equals to r to the n solves this, this for some r. r. And the question is, where the hell did I get this ansatz from? Well, it turns out that this is actually a solution of one of the simplest difference equations because if you take the easiest one, let's say un plus 1 equals to r un. Again, one of the simplest difference equations there is. It turns out the solution is precisely a times r to the n because it's just a geometric sequence. r to the n. So, just as exponential functions are the building blocks of differential equations, r to the n, those power functions, are the building blocks of difference equations. Okay, now suppose this is a solution of this. Let's just plug it in. So, if un is r to the n, un plus 2 is r to the n plus 2. And then, un plus 1 is r to the n plus 1, and un is r to the n. So we get this equation, which is very complicated, but notice each and every place here, we have a common factor of r to the n. So r to the n times r squared minus r minus 1 equals to 0. Okay. And, well, um, we want to find r, but look, if r equals to 0, then we just get the trivial solution, which is not very interesting. So if r equals to 0, then un would be 0. It's not interesting, so let's assume that r is non-zero. And the nice thing is, then we can just cancel out r to the n from this equation, and we get the equation r squared minus r minus 1 equals to 0. And just in like in differential equations, this is called the auxiliary equation because it literally helps us to solve our equation. And this is actually much easier to solve. We can just use the quadratic formula. So from r squared minus r minus 1 equals to 0, we indeed get that r equals to 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. So lo and behold, the golden ratio appears here again, just as expected. So what does it tell you? It tells us, in fact, if r equals to those two values, r to the n solves a difference equation. So the point is, if you think un to be 1, plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n, and 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n, both of those, they solve the Fibonacci relation. So 
un plus 2 equals to un plus 1 plus un. OK. And here comes another neat fact. So this is a linear equation, which roughly means it involves sums and just multiplication by numbers. Once you have a linear equation, you have a nice fact. Namely, if this solves the equation, then in fact, any constant times this also solves the equation. You can verify this. So A times golden ratio to the n solves this. Also, B times this number to the n solves this. So not so golden ratio. Okay. And another thing is about linear equations, if you have two solutions and you add them up, you get another solution. So in fact, not only do those two terms sa satisfy the equation, but also the sum of the two also satisfies the equation. So in fact, un equals to this whole thing also solves our equation. There could be other solutions. It turns out those are all of them. But even if those are not all of them, we can still solve for A and B in this case. And in fact, that's the next thing we have to do. So let's find those. And to find those, let's just use u0 equals to 0 and u1 equals to 1, our initial conditions. I don't know why I took this eraser. Anyway, so then u0, in terms of the formula, it's a times golden to the 0, that's a times 1, plus b times not so golden to the 0, which is still 1, and you get a plus b that equals to 0. So it tells us that b equals to minus a. So un becomes a times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n minus a times 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n. And conveniently, you can factor out a. this thing, a times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n. And now let's plug in 1. So u1 is a times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power, and if you expand that out, you notice again that the one halves cancel out, and you get square root of 5 over 2 plus square root of 5 over 2, which becomes square root of 5, so you get square root of 5a, and you know it equals to 1, because u1 equals to 1, and you get that a is 1 over square root of 5. So a is 1 over square root of 5, which means you can plug this into this formula here, right, for un. And indeed, in the end, you get un is 1 over square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n. Ta-da! How neat and quick was that, huh? And the nice thing is, as I said, you can generalize this to more general recurrence relations. Namely, all you have to do is find the auxiliary equation, solve it, and then you know solve for the constants a and b. And if you like that and you like more math fun, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.